And welcome back to this week. Time now to get the views of our media and political experts, John Rowley of Fletcher Rowley Consultants and Her Daily on 1510 WLAC, syndicated talk show host Steve Gill. Gentlemen, well, Thank nice you. to see you. You heard Chris Devaney trying to kind of downplay, and it is a small group of folks out there. Eight to ten Republican charter chapters, rather, have sent or made it clear that they would like to have the governor sanctioned because of some of his hiring practices, because there's a gay in his administration, a Democrat in his administration, a Muslim in his administration. As I asked Chris, at the very best, does this seem homophobic, does it seem anti-Islamic? Is, what's the point of this? It's not going to get the governor sanctioned in this state. Well, is the Republican Party the party of prejudice or isn't it? I mean, there is, uh, I mean, uh, some outrageous things have been said, and the timidity from the party chairman was troubling to me. And uh, you've got a pretty popular governor yes. uh, who's, who's got a lot to talk about to have state party or, or county party individuals trying to sanction him. I mean, I, I'm amazed that they're not putting the smack down on this sort of extremism. And I think, you know, every party turns the corner and has a downfall when they're at their highest point. The Republicans in Tennessee control a lot of things. And I think this is a telltale sign that they are kind of trembling from the Tea Party. They're not afraid. They're not afraid to take on a couple local Tea Party people against a popular governor. And I think that this is going to be the thing that where the Republican Party eats their own and over the next few election cycles, it's going to hurt them. I think the story is vastly overblown. You've got 95 counties. Last time I checked in Tennessee, you've got, as you said, about seven or eight county mm -hmm. uh, parties. You've got a few folks in those parties that are pushing this. It's going nowhere. These are you know, basically irrelevant claims by people who are, frankly, wrong about what they're talking about. I've looked at the Summer Ali issue. She's the person who's been appointed to head the Economic Development International Trade piece. This is a woman who, as Chris said, was born in Waverly, Tennessee, was in 4-H, went to Vanderbilt undergrad and law school, worked for a major law firm, was a White House fellow, which is one of the most prestigious positions you can get, and comes home recruit, recruited in large part by Will Alexander, Lamar Alexander's son, who worked with her in the law firm <laughs> business, and Bill Haggerty, who himself was a White House fellow. So this attack on Summer Ali is, is illegitimate, it is ridiculous, and frankly, it's a smear. And the bottom line is there are legitimate reasons to be concerned about Sharia, Sharia law, and radical Islam. But you don't do yourself any service to beat on the wrong person because of what somebody else over there might be doing, unless there's something she's done that she's tied to directly. This is ridiculous, and it's time, I think, for the governor to be more forceful in telling these people to shut the heck up. Does it concern you that one of the more powerful, especially financially, chapters, Williamson County is involved with this, they sent a separate letter saying they were concerned that she was on the Trade Commission because she's a Muslim? Look, with all due respect to the Republican Party in Williamson County, Williamson County isn't a Republican county because the Republican Party of Williamson County does such a great job. Republicans live in Williamson County. <laughs> Republicans live in Mount Juliet and Hendersonville and Rutherford County. The Republican Party is not converting Democrat counties to Republican because of a few handful of Republican leaders in those counties, and they need to kind of get over themselves. And it isn't it a little bit odd, as you just pointed out? I've seen two different polls where Governor Haslam's popularity is about 70%. Uh, the party is as powerful as it's probably ever been in this state. It holds the majority of every congressional, Senate, House and Senate uh, legislative seats and the governor's office. Now seems like the wrong time going into an election when maybe there's a divide and conquer aspect going on. I think on. you're also going to see this, this primary process misread, misrepresented by the, by the media and by my good friends like you know, Fletcher and Riley, <laughs> these guys. They're going to paint it if, if a Luann Zelnick wins. They're going to say, oh, the Tea Party wackos have taken control. If she loses, they're going to say, see, the moderates have won. But I would encourage you to watch the ads Diane Black is running. She's claiming to be the most conservative member of Congress in the entire country, putting herself to the right of Michelle Bachman, Ron Paul, uh, Alan West. These people are not running as moderates, so if they win, how will you say that the moderates somehow won this race? I think you're seeing the same thing in these state house races and state senate primaries as well. This is not a battle where you've got moderates running against conservatives. Everybody is claiming to be a conservative. That's true. Well, that's no news flash. Conservatives, Republicans running as conservatives in primaries. What's amazing is you have a popular governor afraid of speaking out against radical statements and radical action. You've got the party chairman who's doing the same thing. It's amazing. Of course, you had Haslam run, claiming, running commercials, claiming he's a, a arch conservative, he's a big conservative. So, again, I think part of the problem you're seeing in Tennessee right now is all these guys ran saying, I'm a conservative. You now have a track record to look at of how they've actually voted. And when they're taking per diem to, to drive from Hendersonville, when they're ghost voting, when they're doing things that are not adherent to what they said they would do, they ought to be held accountable. And frankly, that's what the Tea Party's doing. A federal judge this week said that the Islamic Center of Murfreesboro 
has to have an occupancy permit after it passes inspection. That is a violation of their freedom for religi religious rights, excuse me, not to be able to occupy this building. That seems to be the ruling, waiting on the permit to happen. Whether you agree or disagree, there has been a call for civility with this, let this continue on. There's been violence in the past. Is there any concern, and I'm not trying to obviously fan any flames, that people angry about this, it could get out of hand? Well, the, the demagoguery around this has been amazing. I mean, it's, it's been irresponsible, it's been un-American. I mean, I, I just, I can't, it's, it's hard to imagine people using for political purposes the freedom of religion, which is one of the tenets of how our founding fathers and the pilgrims got to the United States. And so it's, it's embarrassing, and I think, hopefully everyone will take a chill pill, cooler head will prevail and obviously hopefully nothing right. dangerous or out of line will happen. I think if anybody should be concerned about violence, you got to look at the track record of what Islam has brought to the table in terms of violence. So I think uh, the fear or concern of violence ought to be directed more at where we've seen the track well, record. That, that's, but and that's ridiculous, Steve. I mean, there, there's not been any instance or threat coming out of anybody in the Muslim community. All of the angst and the hate has come out of people directed at Muslims in Tennessee. Well, so. you did have a student at TSU who was at the mosque in Nashville who went to uh, Islam came back and killed a soldier in Little Rock, Arkansas. That's in Tennessee. So these mosques here are producing violence. And I think on this date, when it is the 40th anniversary of the murder of the Israelis athletes at, at the Olympics. Olympics, the Muslim countries, the Muslims in the Olympics are stopping even a moment of silence for those murdered athletes. You can't talk about peace and tolerance and love your neighbor when your track record is to say, we can't even honor people that our religion killed. On the campaign trail, the presidential race, it's all about outsourcing jobs, all about Mitt Romney releasing his taxes. He says he's going to release the two years that he says he's going to release. There's even some pressure from some Republicans for him to do more. Do you think he will do more? Is this what we're going to see? I think whatever he does, they're going to continue to pound. Look, he's rich. They're going to be you know, mentioned on page 82. He had a typo. I think it's ridiculous to be arguing about that, particularly when you've got a president of the United States where we haven't seen his college transcripts, we haven't seen his college records, and his own autobiography, according to that right-wing noted columnist David Moranis, has revealed 38 lies in Barack Obama's own autobiography. Let's clean up his record before we start worrying about Romney's. It's just amazing. I mean, R <laughs> Romney, Romney is hands down the worst presidential candidate that's been a nominee for any party in 30 to 40 years. And if this economy wasn't so bad, he would have zero chance of winning. I mean, he's running a bad campaign. He's a bad candidate and he's hiding his record. And so, I mean, obviously he would, he would reveal all of just a few years, not just partials of a few years of his tax returns. And obviously it's going to get worse. But how could it get worse than Cayman Islands and Swiss bank accounts? I mean, I have no idea, but you know, John McCain had a chance to look at his tax returns. He may be one of the few people in the United States, and he said no to Mitt Romney. You know, the bottom line is that Mitt Romney has uh, seen an onslaught of $100 million in attack ads from the Obama campaign, and even with a six to eight point tilt in the polls in favor of the Democrats, you're seeing a dead heat. Uh, if this is a bad candidate, let's bring it on. Steve Gill, John Raleigh, appreciate your time and your insights. Stay with us. This week continues in a moment.